G'day guys, welcome to the channel. Today, I'm gonna help you guys out there figure out how to find a watch that suits your wrist in terms of sizing. Now, I've got some examples here. This is my current state of the collection. And the sizes range from your Santos medium being 35.1 millimeters in case size or diameter, and it's a square, so it's a bit different, all the way up to the Speedy, which is 42 millimeters in case diameter. Now, the most important thing when choosing a watch to fit your wrist isn't more so the diameter because different watches come in different shapes. Those shapes are going to wear differently and some watches are supposed to be worn or look bigger like your Panerais. Panerais are supposed to be bigger. Unfortunately for a lot of people cursed with the small wrists, it's usually a landmine or a minefield navigating which ones fit. If you don't have access to an AD who'll be happy for you to visit them to try these pieces on, you might be left having to buy pieces online and wasting your time returning them and this and that. And this is a lot of money when you're spending on luxury watches. It's a lot of money to waste and a lot of time to waste if you don't get it right the first time. So I'm gonna teach you how to do this properly. Now. The proper way to do this, don't worry about the case diameter so much, don't worry about that. The most important thing is measuring your wristband. So where do you wear your watch? Where does the top of the lug sit and where does the bottom of the lugs rest? For me, I've measured my wristband already. I wear my watches pretty much just on the wrist bone so to speak or a bit below that and this is where the lug would usually rest and then from there. I measure to the point where the actual wrist starts to curve down. So as you can see, 50 mils is my wrist span. Now, when we start looking at these watches, the lug to lug differs greatly. However, we've got case diameters that have shorter lug to lugs than others. So this one is a 42, but the, the lug to lug is actually shorter than these three watches. And these ones are 40, 40, and 41. Strange, right? But giving you an example, let's start off with the Santos. The Santos lug to lug measurement is 42 millimeters. And throwing this on wrist, the Santos medium is the choice for a lot of people because it sits so beautifully for a lot of wrists. As you can see down the cuff, the lugs rest right smack bang in the middle of my wrist. It's beautiful. My brother has the medium and he has a ginormous, ginormous wrist. He could have gotten the large and the large wears differently and the large has a different flavor. But the Santos is popular for a lot of wrist sizes because it's just so classic and elegant. Look at that. Amazing. And it sits perfectly on my dainty wrist. So. This, because it's a square, is going to wear differently for a lot of people. And that's the reason why the lug to lug is the only definitive measurement we have to ensure that these watches fit. And the obsession with case sizes, like, oh, the case size is too big. I mean, it's not the be all and end all. There are going to be watches out there, or there are going to be watches out there that have a larger case size, but actually fits a lot of wrists. So moving on, starting from smallest to largest, now we have the date just. So the date just, it's more of a traditional watch watch, not a square, 36 mil in diameter. However, the lug to lug is 44 mil. So when we slap this baby on, as you can see, it still fits in the middle of my wrist. The two millimeter difference, I mean, you can't really feel it in comparison to the Santos. That's why it makes a good two piece banger right there, but it sits beautifully in the middle of my wrist. It doesn't have to sit more up or more down, it just sits beautifully. And this is the traditional gentleman's watch from back in the day. Nowadays, the sizes and the lug to lugs have become larger due to modern tastes. And that's fine, I enjoy a bit of both, right? We wanna have some variety in our life. Now, moving on from there, we've got the Panerai Radiomir Quaranta. Quaranta is 40 in Italian. And the lug to lug to this is 48 mil, but, as you can see, the watch is a cushion shape. So it's gonna wear differently, it's gonna have different dynamics. And not only that, the lugs are wire. So they're not gonna sit flat, so to speak. Well, this sits flat, but these ones are in 
you know, they're, they're, they're thick, right? They're actually thick lugs with bracelets attached to them. This is on a strap. So the lug to lug itself from here to here, 48 mils, but because there's a strap, it's gonna jolt out a little bit. However, these straps can go down and that's what's gonna make it wear nicely. And that's the reason why these watches are usually just bought on uh, leather straps. So we strap this bad boy on. And as you can see, still within the wristband of my uh, wrist. And when doing videos or shooting your watch or wrist shots, do a times three zoom. That's what I'm doing right now. I'm doing a times three zoom. So it uh, removes the fisheye effect and down the cuff, as you can see, still within my wrist, right? It's fine. It's going to look great. It's going to look banging. It's going to look elegant. It's going to look Italian. And if you're scared of getting a bigger sized watch like this, don't be, right? You need to have some confidence in uh, your selection there. And I hope that this video gives you that confidence knowing lug to lug is really the most important dimension you need to worry about. Not really case diameter, but granted there might be a, a point in time when the case diameter is too damn big, right? If we're talking 47 mil on my wrist, that's gonna be too damn big, right? 42 is probably where we're at. For me at least but next watch we're gonna go through to the uh, GMT master 2 the new pickup now I was always scared about getting rollies in this size 40 41 mils and that's because the case is uh, slab shaped if that makes sense it's more of a slab so the lugs don't curve down like a lot of other watches so that that means is that it doesn't hug your wrist so when the wrist ends up you know, curling or curving, it's not gonna wear, well, I always thought it wasn't gonna wear right on me. However, trying it on, doesn't matter. As you can see here, oh, I love this watch. It's fine. Yep, it's gonna wear a bit more flatter on the wrist, but that's okay. As long as the lug to lug fits, it's fine. Let's do a wrist roll. Boom. Awesome. And as you can see, minty, fits like a glove, looks great. Now, where you decide to wear your watch is also a factor as well. I like to wear mine around here. Some people like to wear theirs here. Other people like to wear theirs there. It really just depends on how you're wearing it. So if I was to wear it higher or closer to my hand, see? It's going to have a different look and feel, whereas if I wear it below the wrist bone, again, different look and feel. However, more importantly, lug to lug, as long as it doesn't jolt out of your wrist, you'll be fine. Now, moving on from there, we've got the Miss Flake and the Speedmaster next. Now, GMT Master, 40 mil. Miss Flake, however, this is 41. And the lug to lug is the same, or well, not the same, but slightly longer than the GMT Master and the Radio Mirror. These two share the same lug to lug at 48 mil. This one's 48.3. However, the case curves down to hug the wrist, as you can see there. It's gonna wear a bit differently, but ultimately if the lug to lug fits your wrist, then that's fine. Look at that, beautiful. This is the Miss Flake. You see how the end links have the male, uh, what's it, like the male end links here, like they're, they shoot out essentially. That curves down. So what it allows for is the bracelet to curve around the wrist nicely, as you can see. So the start of the lug is here, from here, it doesn't shoot out, but this is probably the borderline I'll go. So as you can see, my wrist is starting to curve down here. So 48 is probably the low, the longest I'll go when it comes to lug to lug. That's the Miss Flake. And finally, the Speedy, the good old Speedy. So as I mentioned, the case diameter is one thing. You can have a larger case diameter, but there's a lot of watches out there where the case diameter is larger, but the lug to lug is shorter. And the Speedy is the goodest, or goodest, the best example of that. So 42 mil case size, but the lug to lug is 47.5 and the 
lugs twist down as you can see from the polished surface it twists down it curves down to hug your wrist better and because it's uh, a more manageable lug to lug a lot more people wear this because it's very wearable that's why it's so popular so when we throw it on wrist I love this watch so much and it looks amazing and as you can see it's right smack bang in the middle this is what a Datejust 41 will look like as well it's a lug to lug of 47.5 mil but also my old Black Bay 54 even though it was a 37 mil case size the lug to lug was about 47 millimeters as well it wore very similar to this hence why I always said that it has a lot of uh, wrist presence because the lug to lug is basically the same as this or very similar right but as you can see 42 mil doesn't look too big on my wrist because the lug to lug makes it very wearable and compact also the bezel kind of uh makes it look more proportionate if there wasn't a black ring bezel then i think it'll look a lot larger but there you have it that's the video i hope i've been able to give you some confidence when getting your next pickup and do research that lug to lug i've oh man i've been saying that phrase that l to l i've been saying that phrase a lot this video but it is to me the most important measurement when it comes to picking your next watch purchase hope you guys enjoyed and i'll catch you on the next one take care